Supreme Glow. What's in there? No, you're fine. Have you read that yet? Grit, Angela Duckworth. We bought that. Are you okay over there, Angela? Sorry. And Glad on that, we brought the light in that's not on. Yeah. Hey, my name is Brent Colby. And I'm Steven Salmon, just like the fish. You are listening to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast, episode excellent. Or best. Just like whose office we're in. Yeah, we're in Ashley's office. Hey, if you guys have not met Ashley Best, she is our... Super organized, super efficient, super awesome, and the best. Yeah, she's the uh, assistant director for... The assistant director. She's the assistant, assistant to the, the director. director. Yes, <laughs> there it is. Here at Children's Ministries. And we just finished a huge event, as you can see. Um, it doesn't normally look like this. She asked me to tell you, it's but... It's usually worse. It's usually worse. So, yeah, so we're just here in Ashley's spot. She has lots of cool stuff. Yeah, really cool. No, Pictures guys, of Ashley is super organized. Like, she, this is... It does not usually look like this. She was actually really nervous about us taking over her office. Do is that is? like a super expensive lens, or is that one of those cups that fit, like tricks you? It's a coffee cup. It's a cup. Yeah. Oh man, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I I had a teacher at school who freaked out one of our other photography teachers because he just threw him one of these, and the guy thought it was an actual lens, and he dropped it. And I he broke like it. Big old lens, but this is cool. I won't I won't try to drink from it because I know she probably does. That'd be weird. Yeah. Hey, today episode, as always, is not sponsored by Panda. Where'd he go? Oh, Panda. <clears throat> dancing with a jewel. Look at that. Panda dancing with a jewel. Yeah. Pretty as cool. always. Yeah. As always. I have something awesome for you. Yeah. Um, Kids Camp. We actually talked about this last week. Kids Camp a little bit. Now, yes. here's something I want to tell you about Kids Camp that will really enhance your Kids Camp probably by an a exponent of 10 or more. Okay. And that is... The Fishing Pole Campfire Roaster. You take a good look at this. The Fishing Pole oh Campfire gosh. Roaster will roast your hot dogs and marshmallows simultaneously while positioning them exactly where they need to be over the fire via fishing pole. Let's be honest, how many of these, how many of you actually give sharp pointed objects to kids <laughs> to roast marshmallows at camp? It turns into just a medieval weapon yeah, like Yeah, they're just like, like just smacking each other over the head. I see kids, they get their marshmallow on five and like, oh, look at this, got a lightsaber. I'm like, oh my gosh. We do an event where about 400 kids will roast marshmallows and uh, you should see the volunteers hovering over those hot pokers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the kids barely hold them long enough to get the marshmallow yeah, going. It's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> so, nice, but that is really cool. Yeah, I awesome. thought it'd be good. You know, just keep it keep it real at camp. I think, yeah. uh, you know, we may have to try some of these out this summer. Nice. Very so, cool. Yeah. All right. What um, are we talking about today? Talking about something uh, I think it, it means a lot to both you and me, and the yeah. topic is creativity. Oh. Um, maybe kind of asking the question, where do good ideas come from? Hey, Angela, where do good ideas come from? Children's pastors. Children's pastors. You heard it there. The expert in uh, you, youth ministry. You're a very creative guy. You guys come up with lots of cool stuff. I don't know church. if I'm very creative, but I appreciate <laughs> you saying that. How do you guys? How do you guys come up with your ideas? Where do you start? Man, uh, the first question we ask is, what would be the best thing for our kids? What would be the best thing for our kids? We go, hey. This is our idea. This is our concept. This is what we want to talk about. Okay. Now, how can we support this with um, different, basically, bits or pieces to um, uh, build it into kind of a different way? Got it. So you start with your idea and you kind of pivot from there. Yeah. What's the kind of, do you have any examples of where you had an idea and then you found a fun way to illustrate it? Well, I mean, one of the classic ones is just Bible stories, right? We all tell Bible right. stories. and. Um, a pretty classic is you might have an object or you just kind of tell it. Well, we thought it would be cool to actually, with technology today, animate Bible stories. And yeah, so, okay. really easy, but we get a artist or even a teenager who's good at drawing and get them to draw out the pictures of the story from the Bible. And then we take pictures of it on our phone yeah and then we just upload those pictures almost like a powerpoint oh, that's and just to and then just speak to it and it's really cool kids love it so you use the kids own artwork to kind of illustrate yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fun mm -hmm. um i love one of my favorite things to do is come up with themes for events yes um 
that's I just love doing that. Yeah. And it, I think it's a, you know, the the temptation is just to do this. And I'm not saying this is not creative, but it's not yeah. it is definitely not the most creative. Yeah. Figure out what movie is coming out and then just do a spin off of that movie. That is good. Also, I just want to say that it's incredibly distracting trying to look at you and then there's all these pictures of Ashley right <laughs> behind you and I'm trying to figure out what she's doing in each one and like what's going on. Well, she clearly so, has I mean, lots of friends. This is a very important topic, but you did not realize like how difficult it is for someone with ADD to try and like dialogue with you, and then there's just like, these other people just in the background. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I but understand. creativity. Yeah. So give us movie. an example. Oh, movies. Yeah. Don't just take a movie and spin off of yeah. the movie, right? You can do that. That's a good place to start. But yeah. I feel like a lot of people in ministry kind of take the easy way out just by doing something like that. Sure. Instead sure. of kind of trying to make their own thing. And that's one of the biggest things is if you're not developing, I. I know there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is kind of a, a twist on something that, but right. there is just blatant like plagiarism, right. right? Or like, or you are just being lazy instead of kind of going for the next step. And that really limits you in your creativity when you do that. You're never going to be more than just pretty much a plagiarizer, yeah. whereas instead of an innovator or a creator. Let's give me the top five plagiarized kids ministry ideas. Oh man! I'll start with Fear Factor. Oh the yeah, fear factor. yeah, That's the Fear Factor. From, when did that show come out? Like yeah. in the early two yeah. thousands or Faith no? Factor. Faith it's Factor. Like, yeah, yep. Faith Factor. Uh, what's another? Just it's so copied so often. I mean, I don't know if it's so much children's ministries, but um, I think churches. Church. I mean, adult churches do it too, though. I mean, take the movie Braveheart. Um, there's uh, like. Um, Titanic, Finding Dory, Finding Jesus. Yep. You do the whole journey thing, yeah. Finding Nemo. I mean, we're not saying this is bad, but that's no. probably, there's another next level of creativity that you yeah. can add into your church. One thing I like to do, um, there's this concept of finding good ideas and generating good ideas. Yeah. And of course, nothing starts from zero, so you've right. got to have something to pull from. Yeah, and like those movies might have something cool about them or in them that you can emulate mm -hmm. or kind of try to build off, but don't just rip the whole movie and like maybe change a character's name or something and you're just like re you're just right. redoing it i love when you can take two like this this interesting idea and then just this interesting idea yeah yeah when you combine it you've created something right new yeah and i think a lot of times when people even the way you describe movies or video games oh it's like this meets that you right. know the x plus y and that's really where good ideas come from. Yeah. Now, if you have a broad base of really interesting, kind of diverse ideas, topics, whether they be you know, artistic expressions, video games, movies you watch, board games you play, whatever it is that's kind of creative and fun yeah. industry, and you can combine two obscure things, you've instantly made something new and creative. It's really cool when you go and find those obscure things to kind of get more creative about, rather than the things that are right there in the limelight, because they grabs kids and people's attention more because they know, hey, this isn't something that's already in my face everywhere else I go. Yeah. You know? Here's my two favorite places to get good ideas. Okay. Uh, like physical places. Number one is the party store. <laughs> nice. I walk around the party store and sometimes all I need is just one key piece. Yeah. It could be a mask, it could be a prop, it could be a hat, and I think, right. oh, you know what would be funny is if we did this plus something else. That's one of my favorite spots. Nice. The other spot is the hardware store. The I hardware store. I love walking store. through Home Depot and just looking for a weird prop gadget. Some I don't even know what its original intent is, but I think, oh, you know what would be a fun game if we screwed this onto a two by four yeah. and we'd got some string or something like that. Yeah. I just always love thinking kind of creatively. And I find those yeah. two environments, toy stores, similar to the party store, um, are good jumping spots for me. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things about being creative is get more people in thinking with you on the idea too because you would be surprised at the solutions that other people have come up with for things and right. how they get things done like we had a problem where we had to basically build a backstage at an area where there was no backstage we had to run right. this curtain all the way across where there was no pipe so we're like how are we going to do this well, someone goes, oh, yeah, there was this time where we ran this steel wire all the way across, and you do this, and you get these twist tie things, and it makes it really taut. I'm going, I've never heard of any of this before. Yeah. I think people do it now to almost hang pictures up in their house. I sure. think Ikea sells like the most new ones. We hung an entire stage and built a wow. basically a, a, a pernician style double double curtain stage. Pernician yeah, style? Yeah, it's a kind of a fancy word. I don't know. <laughs> Just a pernician style yeah, double know. bag it's, with the gear. Whatever. Gainer. But, you know, but we, we were able to do it and it was really cool. 
Awesome. And I would never have known that unless I talked to this person in our church who I would never have thought would have gone to for like yeah. creative ideas. Yeah, before, that's cool. Right? Stephen, yeah. a few months ago, you recommended a book that we read called Creativity Inc. Inc. Yeah. Yes, great book. Would that help with something like this? Yeah, if you're because in a place? they actually go through their process, but they also encourage you like saying, this is how we did it, but you can take principles that we've done and actually apply that um, to where you're at now. And that book, it's so good. Yeah, and the they, and that, that's Ed Catmull, and he's behind Pixar, Pixar. Disney yeah. right now. Yeah, and yeah. what's crazy is when you read that book, you realize he didn't start there. Like, he started as an animator and really got into it um, kind of because he just liked movies but was creating a lot of the technology himself. So it actually shows that it's like, so oh, yeah, Pixar, they're the best, you know, they, they but it really goes through the struggle that they had like coming up with this stuff. And so just know, even the experts, the guys who we would say are the creatives, like the ultra creatives in the world, they struggle with this all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can hear my wife shouting at me. There's one last resource you have to check out. Okay. for ideas. Joanne Fabrics. Close. Oh. Pinterest. Pinterest. Oh, so good. Don't overlook it. Okay. Yeah, Don't be too cool, good. guys, to it's go good. check out your, get your Pinterest Put some on. pins up. <laughs> yeah, so. That's how it is. Yeah. Hey, we'd love to hear about where you get your good ideas from. And if yeah. you have any, leave them in the comments below. Angela, anything else to add? No, nope, I think you covered it. Oh, oh, the bathroom is always a good place to get ideas. The bathroom is a good the place to bathroom. get ideas. Now she's just trying to act too cool for school. Like, youth, <laughs> youth, youth is way better. Oh, the bathroom. All we have to do is go to the bathroom. We get great <laughs> ideas in youth. Yeah, well, I think we understand why some of the things happen in youth groups now. <laughs> I'm Stephen Salmon. I'm Brent Colby. And this has been the Future Ministry Podcast.